Good morning everyone. So, I've got a bit of a drive ahead of me, about three hours up towards Birmingham Way. Uh, and hopefully, the roads will be pretty clear because it's a bank holiday Monday and today's Sunday. So, uh, it should be nice and quiet, should be a good run. And, uh, well, on my way back, if everything goes well, I'll have a new EQ8R Pro in the boot of the car. I absolutely cannot wait to get this home. Right, let's go for it. My name's Glenn, you're watching Astro Bloke. about halfway now so about an hour and a half to go uh, for my estimated time of arrival the roads have been really good um, I managed to avoid a big uh, problem on the M25 because that was shut with uh, over 20 miles of traffic due to a major incident so not sure what's happened there but uh, I was able to get around that and get onto the uh, M11 from a different route so that was good, only added about 15 minutes to my total journey time, so nothing too bad. So uh, yeah, we'll just carry on and uh, hopefully it'll stay like this and we'll be there before we know it. Okay, speak to you later. Hi everyone and Happy New Year to you all. So I'm feeling that 2022 is going to be a good year for me and I've started it off with a new purchase. I've bought myself a new mount, an EQ8R Pro. Now when I bought my CT10 I was always thinking I'm going to need a bigger mount because the EQ6R Pro, although it handled the uh, scope fine, um, if there was a bit of a breeze about, it would affect it. It could lose subs. And it was kind of guiding on the limit. It needed, it needed a beefy amount to get the best out of this scope. So I've now gone for an EQ8R Pro. I'd like to say thank you to David, who lives up in the Midlands. I had a nice drive up there and I bought this from him and it's in absolutely well, it's basically brand new. He hadn't used it, so fantastic. Um, it's, uh, I thought the EQ6 was a big mount when I first bought it, uh, but this thing is an absolute tank. So um, let me uh, show you around some of the features. So we've got... Uh, the weights are 10 kilograms, come in a really nice uh, painted finish. Everything on this mount is uh, larger, um, beefier, heavier, and it's got so much stability. It's uh, quite amazing. The um, azimuth and alternation adjustments are extremely smooth, and once you've got them adjusted, you can lock them in place. Um, you've got some bolts here for extra locking, but these large nuts either side loosen it and then you can very easily move it up and down. So I'm going to put this on my pier in a bit um, and get it all polar aligned hopefully tonight if it's clear again and get it working really well. So I was imaging last night off of the tri pier, which is an absolute beast, um, brilliant, really stable. Um, but obviously this took some putting together. Uh, this is not a portable mount in any way, shape or form. So I bought it because it's for my observatory um, and uh, I think it's gonna work brilliantly in there. If you look at the uh, top mounting plate, you'll see that it's got auxiliary outs at this end, 
and at the other end we've got uh, USBs and power outs. Now I've got my Pegasus power box on here because I was kind of using a mismatch of what I had before. Haven't quite worked out all of the power throughs on this. So we've got the USB in and uh, lots of inputs here, none of this moves. So we can, we've got through the mount cabling, which is absolutely brilliant. Now this hasn't got the encoder, but from everything I've read and seen, these guide brilliantly. So if you've got the encoder, you can maybe get away with uh, not guiding, but I like to guide and I've got off axis guider um, on this uh, rig. So uh, that works really well. And uh, so uh, last night was the first bit of guiding I'd done. I just did a calibration. Um, I was getting 0.4 at one point, um, and then it was sort of up 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Um, it went as high as 0 0.7 at one point. Um, so I was just mucking about with a few settings and everything, and it seemed to settle itself down to the low 0.6. Um, which was absolutely fine for my uh, imaging scale. That was, that was cool, no problem at all. Um, but I will hopefully, with some uh, guide assistance and also running a PEC training, I should hopefully be able to get those numbers even better and I'd be really happy if I could get this sub 0.5, get it down to about 0.4, I'd be really, really happy. Everything about this mount is uh, beefier than what you get with uh, an EQ6, obviously which you would expect because it's a lot bigger. Also, but clutches are nice, they've got big levers on them so it makes them nice and easy to move. I found balancing with the rig really easy. Um, everything was really smooth, uh, just all worked and it was really nice actually connecting it up. I didn't have any problems, it seemed to work absolutely fine no issues whatsoever. You can see there my balance wasn't quite right last night so I was getting good guiding even though my balance was off so I've done quite well but um, yeah everything about this mount uh, just 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 worked really well. I was really happy with it out of the box and I think with a bit of work I'll get this uh, guiding and performing brilliantly. It's extremely heavy so bear that in mind if you're thinking of getting one. But uh, let me show you into my Obsi now, because I've taken the EQ6 off. And this was the uh, peer adapter I had for the EQ6, which I got from Altair Astro. So when I built my peer, these uh, uprights go straight into the concrete below. So I was kind of fixed on what I would need to go on top. And I did look at making my own plate. But uh, because of the way the bolts go and they're inside the foot plate of the new mount and it has to sit flush, they would have to be count countersunk quite away. Um, and uh, by the time I was pricing up a piece of metal I'd need to get and then all the work involved in making an adapter, it actually wasn't that more expensive to just buy one. And Altair Astro did a brilliant job. I ordered it yesterday and it came this morning, so I can't complain. And because all of their adapters fit their pier, um, the bolts line up absolutely perfectly for this. So I'll be able to just bolt this on and this will be the uh, adapter for the EQ8. So I'm now going to put this on and I'm going to get the EQ8 head in here. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to get it all ready and hopefully tonight I'm going to continue adding some data to the Crab Nebula, which I took last night for the first time. And what a beautiful target. I didn't realise um, just how much detail I would get on it. I'm at 1200 millimetres, so I wasn't sure if I had enough reach for it, but I do. It's absolutely fine. I can crop in. And fantastic detail and uh, some absolutely stunning colours come out of that nebula. Really, really beautiful. So um, I'll look forward to sharing that with you. But for now, I'm going to change this plate over. Going to get that EQ8 head in here. Get the CT10 mounted on it and uh, go from there. Right, so this is my EQ6 adapter. Um, it actually, it's a dual adapter. One side is for the EQ6 and the other side is for the HEQ5. Um, so, if I ever build another pier in the garden, I can utilize this adapter. But at the moment, I'm gonna use the EQ6 off of the uh, tripod that it came with. 
after moving the EQ8 about, it's a lot. It seems a lot more portable than I first thought. I used to think, oh, the EQ6 isn't that portable. It's quite heavy, but nothing compared to the EQ8. Okay, so can take that off, and we've got the new adapter that came for the 8, and because it's uh, made by the same company, Altair, and it fits their pier, <clears throat> it will just, the holes will line up perfectly with what I've already got. Now, the only thing I'm not sure about is the length of the bolts they provided, because this is not as thick as the uh, other one. Um, so uh, I need to see whether or not I'm gonna need to have a spacer for the bolts or not. So they've got um, some shorter bolts than, than the other one. So these most probably make up for the difference in the thickness of the metal. Now the other ones screw down perfectly. So I'm hoping that these will do the same and uh, we'll just go into the adapters I've got underneath. Uh, so that goes onto the thread of the uh, bolts that come up through from the concrete. So they have extra two holes here for the uh, mounting it on their pier. Okay, let's just uh, get most of the slack of these down and then we'll see how these bolt down, see if they go down enough. Looking good. Yep, doesn't look like I'm going to have to pack them out at all, which is nice. So what I'm going to have to do on the EQ8, uh, on the tri-pier, is see whether or not the pin, north pin, will come out. Um, unbolt and go in there. If it won't, I've got a bolt that I can put in there. And that will be the adjustment for the pole alignment. Well, that has gone on a lot easier than I expected. Well, that's the beauty of buying something pre-made, I suppose. That's very nice. So that's on. And I know that there's two securing bolts on the EQ8 to lock the azimuth in place that go into here. And they've given me some slightly longer bolts uh, with some nuts for the bottom. So I'm assuming that's what we use for that if we can't use the ones that came with the EQ8. Right, let's uh, go and take that head off. So although the mount is extremely heavy, it's got this nice mechanism here that puts the centre bolt in. I'm just going to undo that. It's got some great carrying handles on it and this allows you to move it about. So I'm just going to loosen this off of the, uh, make sure it's off of the unlocked from the pier. This can get in the way, the counterweight bar, so I'm just going to remove that too. And then we can lift this off. I'm not going to take it straight onto the pier because I need to sort out the um, azimuth pin. So you've got these two really nice grab handles here and it allows you to carry the weight. Now it is 26 kilograms but with these handles it does allow you to carry it without too much fuss. So. So I've got a bolt that works on the EQ6 mount quite well. So I've borrowed the pin from the EQ6R Pro tripod because that screws in, that's nice. And I've got a, a bolt um, with the uh, which can replace this on the EQ6 tripod legs. On the bottom of the EQ6, there's quite a large uh, gap for the azimuth to be adjusted on, but on the EQ8, it's quite narrow. So with an extra bolt on here with a with a M12 thread, it would have trouble sitting over the top. So this is a much better solution for this and I can sort, of sort the other one out another way. Right, I'm gonna go and get the EQ8 head, stick it on here. So as you can see, it's quite a lump. You need a bit of an effort here. I'm just catching that there and that is I think on 
that looks good. Just gonna undo those a bit so it's got a little bit of movement about. Everything lines up nicely. It's a big mount, isn't it? Let me uh, see if I can move you back a bit and you can see a bit more. There you go. So it's a very, very, very bulky mount and uh, gonna make a nice job. So this is the uh, M12 fabrication I've made. So I'm gonna bolt this up underneath <coughs> and that will tie this down. And then um, once we've got the azimuth set, the side bolts there can be tightened down and that will lock it in place. And hopefully once I've got a really good polar alignment, everything will be locked in place and it will never move. Well, maybe it'll move a bit, who knows. The nice thing is, is because the threads are quite, quite coarse, they're not too hard to get located on. What I've got here is two nuts on the bottom of a bolt, big washer. And we just do this up. And this will tie the mount down. Not the easiest of things to do up. But just take your time worth doing a good job because it's one of those things that once it's in it's in and you haven't got to do it again unless you buy a new mount like I did because I can't stop myself the rabbit holes deep people if you want to do astrophotography be prepared for commitment Okay, this can be done up nice and tight now. Now, I've got some cabling here, which I can now, which was the EQ6 cabling, will now become the EQ8 cabling. So we're gonna have a USB in there, and it uses the same uh, USB, um, speeds as the EQ6 um, on EQ mod and you just literally mark this down as like a HEQ5 EQ6R Pro on the uh, selection and it all works from there and, and that is it and there we go there's our uh, there's our cable there all right let's just tuck that back in there that's uh, just come out of the sleeve there we just pop that back in keep it all nice and neat I do like this nylon uh, casing. It does make things look so much smarter. It keeps everything nice and neat. Right, that's that. Okay, that's really good. And this cable here is my, used to have to be quite a bit longer, but now this is the camera connection and that'll go straight there into that USB. And I can mostly pull this slack completely out. I really do think this is going to be a much neater solution than what I had before. Just going to take you off this tripod. Apologies if you move about a lot. So we've got the power in here. And this is the USB. It's literally just a USB connection. We don't need a special cable or anything. Just like a printer lead that goes in there. Your power on and off up here. So that's all nice and neat. And then around here we've got our USB in. We've also got a power in here, which gives us power to the top here um, and uh, the declination, so we can run shorter leads to all of the things that need power. And these are our locking bolts for when we've done our altitude adjustment. We've got these ones here, um, which we lock first, and then we can lock it really strongly with them, and then it's all fixed. Um, and I look forward to getting that done later, and we'll show you that. But the uh, action on the uh, adjustments for altitude and azimuth are brilliant. Right, I'm going to put the counterweight bar on. I've got to see whether or not I've got to lower that shelf. Because I might have to. Uh, we'll have a look. I'll be back. Okay, as everything in my little obsy is all very snug in here. But I don't think the shelf is a problem. 
uh, I won't have to be out of anything tall on it because it will sweep across it. But what I might do is just lower the shelf a couple of notches and that'll get that completely out of the way. But uh, it's actually not going to interfere with the uh, movement of this mount as that's the, the arc it moves on. So as you can see, it's not going to hit anything. So that's, that's fine. It's just snug as always. I do absolutely love the finish on everything, even the uh, toe saver, the little locking bolt, it's, everything's metal uh, and finished really nicely. Just And they're matching to the weights as well. Not important really, but uh, nice, nice touch. I do like it. Okay, just make sure these are done up nice and firmly so they're not gonna slip. And we'll put the old toe saver in. I say I am going to move this down I think just to make sure I've got not got any danger of anything being hit because uh, I don't mind it being snug in here but whew, there's not a lot of room is there right obviously in hindsight I mostly would have had my pier a bit further back um, but it's not going to be a problem it's going to work so uh, we're not going to worry about it. Right, I think we are ready to get the scope. So I'm going to move the camera out. And you can watch me have a fight with this. Okay, let's have a look at the angle. Oh, that all looks good, doesn't it, eh? Right, let's just get this uh, open because I can't do it. Uh, unfortunately, with the roof shut because it's got to be in its uh, part position. Making sure everything's ready for it, which I do believe it is. Right, I'll see you in a moment. So the only thing I was doing differently than what I'll most be doing in the future is I was still using my Pegasus Powerbox Advance. Um, what I like about that is through Nina, I can turn on the anti, it will monitor the dew um, situation and actually put the heating elements that are built inside this scope on and also run the fans at the back. And I like that a lot. I don't want them on permanently, which would have happened if I put them to the power on the actual mount. All that needs to be done now was to finalise my setup so that the second clear night in a row was all ready for me. And now I can show you my final image of the Crab Nebula, which I hope you enjoy. I thought this was a rather interesting target. What I want to do before I go is not only wish you all a happy new year, but to thank you for your support. My YouTube channel is far bigger than I expected it to be and your support and comments have made it all worthwhile. I thank you ever so much. I hope the content I'm making is entertaining and more importantly, is of some use to you. I'd also like to extend a special thank you to the people that have just joined my channel. That extra help means a lot and makes a big difference. So thank you very much. Right, let's show you this uh, image. Uh, the first image I've taken on the new EQ 8R Pro. So until next time, please take care and I really do wish you all clear skies.